Hey everybody and welcome to this week's yoga video. This week's video is brought to you by Clever Yoga who sent me their brand new no slip liquid balance yoga mat which I'm going to share with you right now. Okay wow so this top is so grippy and sticky there's no way you're going to slide on this at all. You can see the thickness is a really, it's perfect. I think any thicker and it would affect your balance, any thinner and it wouldn't feel so great on your knees. So it's like, it's a perfect amount of thickness. On the other side, you can see that it is very sticky. Again, it has like a good tread. It's not gonna move when you are practicing. I'm gonna lay it out flat for you so you can see. Wow, so it's a little bit wider than my normal regular mats. So if you can see, there's like a tape there, that's where my mats normally end, and then tape there. That's where, so it's a little bit wider, which is really nice, because that gives you more room to practice on. And then just to pan down, it's great. And when you step on it, you kind of sink into it, but it's like, just, has just the right amount of give. I am really into this mat. Clever Yoga is also offering YBC readers and viewers a 20% off coupon code. Use the code GIVE20CB. All right, so in a comfortable seated position, roll your shoulders back. We're gonna do a really fun arm balance yoga flow just to, uh, you know, work on our strength and work on things that we don't normally see during your traditional vinyasa or hatha yoga class. So it's a little bit more advanced, but if you're not quite there, just give it a try anyway, or just watch so that you know what you can work up to once you finally do have the strength. And please don't be discouraged. There was, you know, a couple years ago, I wasn't able to do half of these poses, and now here I am, and they're like second nature to me. So just keep up with your practice every day, every other day, just as long as you have a consistent practice, you'll continue to grow, continue to build strength, and you'll get anywhere you want to go. So seat on your mat, roll your shoulders back, let's close the eyes and turn the palms to face up. Just take a deep breath in through your nose. Exhale through your mouth. And then begin to connect with your breath, deep breaths in, deep breaths out. Consider creating that ujjayi sound, which is the sound that a seashell makes when you put it up to your ear, it's kind of that ocean echo. Notice that as you inhale, your belly expands, and as you exhale, your belly button draws in towards your spine. See if you can make your inhales and exhales of equal length. Allow your shoulders to melt away from your ears. As you arrive into the present moment, let go of anything you're dealing with off your mat that you don't need right this second. And on your next inhale, quietly open up your eyes and lift your arms up overhead and bend at the elbow, dropping your hand back behind you. See if you can keep your chin parallel to the ground and breathe into your tricep. Inhale, open up, exhale, other side. Inhale, open up, and then bring the left arm out in front of you, right hand back behind you, gentle twist. Inhale, lift up, look up, exhale, other side. Inhale, lift up, look up, exhale, hands come down in front of you, deep breath in, ripple up through your spine, and as you exhale, just walk your arms out in front of you making any movements you need to to warm up, feel good here. And then rise up, and bring the other foot out in front, the foot that was out in front, bring that in towards your pelvis, bring your hands down out in front of you, and slide your hands forward, letting your head hang heavy. And then rise up, 
and find your way onto all fours. Wrists, elbows, and shoulders in one long line, knees underneath the hips, curl your toes. As you inhale, lift your right arm up overhead, look up. And as you exhale, send the right shoulder down to the ground, right side of the head comes down as well. Press into your right arm until you feel a stretch in your upper back. You can hang out here, or you can bring your left hand back behind you, grab hold of your upper right leg. Inhale, come back to center, and then lift your left arm, reach to the sky, and bring that left hand down to the ground, press into the left shoulder, left side of the head comes down. Option to stay here or lift your right arm, or bring your right hand to grab hold into the hip crease. Inhale, come back to center, and then press your hips back coming into child's pose, but keep your toes curled so the bottoms of your toes are pressing into the mat. You're getting a good stretch into the bottoms of the feet. And as you inhale, round forward, coming into cobra pose. And then gently press back into child's. Round forward once again. Curl your toes and lift up for a downward facing dog. First one of the day, so make any movements you need to before coming into stillness. Invite your heels down to the ground, no worries if they don't get there. Inner thighs spin up towards the sky. And as you exhale, just kind of sink into this pose, letting your head be heavy, pressing the mat away from you. Fingers are spread very wide, and the big mounds of the fingers are glued to the mat. Long armpits, very strong arms. As you inhale, lift your right leg high, spread the toes, and then send your foot to the front of the mat. See if you can come there with control. Rise up for high lunge, and then bring the hands down. Step the left foot up to meet the right. And then once you get there, step your right foot back. Come into plank pose, and then right into downward facing dog. Inhale, lift the left leg high, spread the left toes. Use your core strength to step forward to the front of the mat, rise up. Hands come down. Right foot steps to the front, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift, forward fold. See if you can bring your belly down to your thighs. Bend your knees if you have to. Inhale, halfway lift, exhale, forward fold. Inhale, rise all the way up, arms up overhead. And then heel till your feet apart, a little bit wider than hip distance. Inhale, lift your arms up. Exhale, swan dive forward, bending your knees a bit and grabbing opposite elbows for ragdoll pose, letting your whole upper body hang heavy. And as you inhale, you're gonna bend your knees deeply to a squatting position, arms up overhead. Now you can come up onto the balls of your feet if you need to. Gently release, ragdoll pose. Lift again. And come back down, ragdoll pose. From here, lifting back, Arms overhead, and then gently release the arms, bring your hands into prayer position, coming into Malasana Garland Pose. So again, you can be up on the balls of the feet or down with flat feet. From here, we're gonna go right into it. We're gonna bring the hands down into, uh, onto the mat, shoulder distance, a little bit wider than shoulder distance, and then glue your fingers into the mat. Grip in like you're a rock climber. Lift your hips and set your knees as high up the arms as you can. Lean forward, lean forward, lean forward. Maybe one foot lifts, maybe the other foot lifts as well. And then you're gonna use your intercostal strength to lift up even more. Look out in front of you, spread your toes. And then when you're ready, jump back or step back, finding your way into plank, chaturanga, up dog, and we'll meet in downward dog. Inhale, lift your right leg high. Step the foot to the front of the mat. Once you're there, you're gonna turn your feet so your toes are facing the right long edge of your mat. And you're gonna sit down onto your left hip. Bring your left hand in line with your left hip, then out away from you, and then to the left. Bring your right arm in front of your right shin, and grab hold of the left shin or the bottom of the left foot. 
Now, your right foot toes are going to be pointed about 45 degree, degrees away from you. When you're ready, you're going to rock and roll. You kind of rock and roll back and forth and get up into baby grasshopper pose. So you press into your uh, right foot and your left hand. You're going to lift your hips, but then sink low. Hold and gently release. From here, we're going to come back to face the front of the mat, finding our way into high lunge. From here, hands come down, plank position, lower down, up dog, down dog. Deep breath in, deep breath out. Inhale and lift your left leg high. Spread the toes, left foot comes to the front of the mat. Then begin to turn on your feet so you're coming to sit down on your right hip. I'm gonna turn just so you can see what I'm doing. Right hand comes in line with your right hip, out in front, to the right. Then bring your left arm out in front, grab hold of the right shin or the right foot, rock and roll, and then get up. By pressing into your left foot, hand comes down. From here, we're gonna gently release and then turn to face the front of the mat, coming into high lunge. I'm gonna turn because I was turned before. And we all meet in high lunge. From here, hands come down, step back for plank. Lower for chaturanga. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, down dog. Now once you get here, I'm gonna walk the hands back to the back of the mat. Squat low. And then you're gonna turn your knees out to the right. Hands are a little bit wider than shoulder distance. We're coming into side crow here. So lift up from your hips and then set your knees onto your right arm. They need to be high up the arm, as high as you can. And then just tiptoe and lift maybe one foot, maybe the other. Hold, breathe, and release. We'll take it to the other side. So step your feet back to the middle, knees out to the left. And you're gonna lift your hips. Sorry, my mic keeps falling down. Lift your hips, stack the knees, tiptoe, and lean forward. And then use your intercostal strength to keep yourself light and lifted. Gently release. From here, you're gonna bring the knees down. Come into child's pose, just take a breath or two. Slow it down. Reconnect with your intention. Reconnect with your center. And if you weren't able to do any of those things, let it go. There's no use in getting upset with yourself and beating yourself up about it. Just let it go. It's not a big deal. As you inhale, rise up. You grab opposite biceps. It's important to grab opposite biceps, not opposite elbows. The biceps are what you need. That's the correct distance. Bring your hands down to the ground. Interlace your fingers. We're gonna bring the head down and come into supported headstand. So the head comes down. Already you're gonna begin to push into your forearms so that your upper back is kind of rounding. This means that your shoulders are engaged. Your whole upper body is getting prepared to support you. So curl your toes. Lift up and walk, walk, walk. When you can't walk any further, lift one leg and just gently lift up off the bottom foot. Try not to kick. You can do anything you want when you're up here. You can bicycle the legs out. You can do splits. You can do eagle legs. Whatever feels best for you, do that. Remember that whatever you do on one side, you wanna do on the other. And above all, remember to breathe. 80% is in the upper body, the head is just kind of like a kickstand. When you're ready, gently release and find your way into child's pose. From here, we'll go into forearm stand. So we'll do the same thing with the arms. You grab opposite biceps, but then bring the arms either 
parallel to each other, or I like to have my hands in prayer position and I press the knife edge of my hands into the ground. That just feels better for my shoulders, but whatever way you want to do it for you is great. Now, I like to kind of rock side to side on my arms and that helps to get me a better solid foundation. So kind of rock side to side, get the fleshy part of your forearms out of the way. And then I feel really good and stable here. This mat is actually really great because I'm not sliding at all. From here, I'm gonna round forward. I'm gonna already begin to push into the mat so that I have that upper back round. And I'm gonna curl my toes, walk as far forward as I can and lift one leg and then just gently lift up, hopping up off that bottom foot. Once you're up, same thing. You can do anything you like. Whatever you do on one side, you wanna do on the other. Keep pressing the mat away, going for that 90 degree angle in your arms. And then when you're ready, gently release. Child's pose. As you inhale, bring your hands down to the ground, round forward onto all fours, curl the toes and lift up for downward facing dog. Gonna end with a little handstand practice. What I like to do is begin in downward facing dog and then walk my feet as far forward as I can, almost like I'm doing like a forward fold, but my arms are slightly more out in front. My hands are shoulder distance, I grip into the mat, I lift one leg, and then I just like to kind of hop up off that bottom foot, not kick, just hop and find the magical place where my pelvis comes over my head. And this is how you do it. You just kind of get comfortable being upside down. And then you can kind of play, or if you fall, you can just kind of kick over and come all the way down. Just play around with it for a couple minutes. <clears throat> And when you're ready, come all the way down into Shavasana, which is where we're gonna end it. Fear, mat distance, arms are by your side, palms facing up, close your eyes. And just let go of whatever happened. If you were able to get up in a handstand, who cares? If you were not able to get up and handstand, who cares? It's just not that big a deal. Let yourself be wherever you are and let that be a beautiful part of your journey. As you settle into Shavasana, close your eyes, let your eyes sink into the sockets. And relax the space between your eyebrows. And let go of your ujjayi breath, begin to breathe naturally. We're gonna be here for about five minutes and I'll let you know when the five minutes are complete.
Begin to wiggle your fingers and toes. And then roll over onto your right side, cradling your head and your arm. Take a deep breath in. As you exhale, press yourself up into a comfortable seated position. Bring your hands to your heart. Just take a moment to close your eyes and acknowledge your health, your commitment to your practice, your strength inside and out. And when you're ready, seal in your practice with Namaste. Thank you so much for practicing with me today. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give it a thumbs up down below. Please also leave a question or a comment down below. I'll do my best to be in touch. And if you really enjoyed this, share this with your friends who are into yoga. If you're interested in pre-ordering my book, Namaste, it is now available on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and IndieBound.org, and will be released October 25th. 2016. Thank you so much for practicing with me today and I'll be back next week with more content for the YBC YouTube channel.